CSU claims 40% of its undergraduates get a job in the first three months after graduating. Does UW have a lower job placement rate than CSU? I asked, did you get a job in the first three months after graduating, yes or no, to 40 randomly selected UW alumni? And then it gives the results. So first, the 40 randomly selected UW alumni, that's one sample. There's one variable. Did you get a job? And the level of measurement of this is categorical, and it only has with two outcomes. And the two outcomes being yes or no. And so it's for these reasons is why the test situation is one sample proportion. That's how we know it's one sample proportion. And now the question of interest, we have this claim or this reference, and then our question ties that into a lower job placement. And so that is the question of interest we're trying to answer. So one sample proportion hypothesis testing, we always know P equals something. And what is P going to equal? Well, we need to make sure we understand what we're actually comparing. And to do that, we need to know the outcome of interest. So the outcome of interest we get from the question of interest. Does UW have a lower job placement rate? And so this is talking about job placement, people who got a job. This is talking about people who got a job. So the context of the question of interest is in, yes, we got a job. It has nothing to do about what's listed first in this case. It's we really want to compare to this 40%, and that 40% is in the context of, yes, getting a job. So that's why this is a yes. And we want to compare UW to CSU. And we know CSU's value is that 40%. So that's why P naught in this case is that 0. 0.40. So P naught equals 0. 0.40, which is why it goes into the null hypothesis. Then once we know the null hypothesis, the alternative, we bring the P and we bring the 0. 0.40. The question is, do I want a less than, a greater than, or a not equal to? Well, we're comparing UW to CSU, and it says UW lower than CSU. So that's why this P is in the context of getting a job for UW alumni less than, and this isn't for CSU. So that's how we know the hypotheses in this case. We can look at that in English. So remember the null P equals 0. 0.40. So this right here is P equals 0. 0.40. And that 0. 0.40 is the same thing as saying the proportion of CSU graduates that get a job in their first three months. And then the alternative, P less than 0. 0.40. So again, this is the P less than 0. 0.40. And the 0. 0.40 in English, or the 0. 0.40 is representing 
point the proportion of CSU graduates that get a job in their first three months. So now that we know the alternative hypothesis is a less than, that means the critical value is equal to a negative 1.645. So because it's a less than in the alternative hypothesis, the critical value is that negative 1.645. And if we draw another number line here, I put zero, negative 1.645. Everything over here, the test statistic is over there, then I fail to reject the null. And everything over there is where we reject the null hypothesis. So, Less than negative 1.645, reject the null. The test statistic is greater than one point, negative 1 1.645, fail to reject the null hypothesis. So now we have everything we need to calculate the test statistic value. So we know n is equal to 40. We get that right there. We know p hat, it was given to us is the 0.25. And so we got to remember our outcome of interest is yes. So this is the estimated proportion of UW alumni that get a job in the first three months because the outcome of interest is yes because we're comparing to this known 40% of yeses from CSU. And then we know from the hypotheses that P naught is 0 0.40. So now the test statistic is equal to 0 0.25 minus 0 0.40 square root 0 0.40 minus 0 0.40 all over 40. And when we make that calculation, we get a negative 1.94. Negative 1.94. So that is the value of the test statistic. And we can use the test statistic value to get the p-value. And the p-value in this case is going to be the probability that z is less than negative 1.4 excuse me, negative 1.94. How do we know that's the formula for the probability statement for the p-value? It's because the alternative hypothesis is a less than. So because the alternative hypothesis has a less than, the probability statement for the p-value is z, standard normal, less than the test statistic value. There's no absolute values. There's no multiplying by two. That is the probability statement for the p-value because the alternative has a less than in it. And so we can just go right to the table. Negative 1, 9, 4. It's me that value right there. So this p-value is 0 0.02619. So we've calculated the test statistic value. We've used that to get the p-value. It should be noted, it's very, very important to get the alternative hypothesis right because so much depends upon using the alternative hypothesis to get the critical value and to get the right probability statement for the p-value. So now we can use these to determine our statistical decision. So we are going to reject the null because negative 1.94 is less than negative 
four, five. So the testistic is less than the critical value. That's why we're going to reject. Or we could say, I'm going to reject the null because 0 0.02619 is less than 0 0.05. The p-value is less than alpha. So either one of those is justification for rejecting the null hypothesis. Now the question might come up, is the test statistic to the critical value going to give a different statistical decision than the p-value in alpha? And the answer is no. The reason for this is the critical value is based upon this value of alpha. And so they're always going to lead you to the exact same decision. If they don't, it's an indication that something went wrong. You either calculate your p-value wrong or you calculate your test statistic wrong, something like that. These are always going to lead you to the same conclusion. So then we can look at the actual conclusion. So we rejected the null hypothesis. So I conclude, and then this is the alternative in English. And then this is interpreting P hat. So I conclude that the true proportion of UW graduates that get a job in the first three months is less than 0.40. Specifically, I predict that 25% of UW graduates get a job within the first three months. And so this takes us all the way full circle to answering our question of interest in the context of the problem using the one sample proportion hypothesis testing situation.